Hello and welcome to another episode from the Water's Edge. Now today you catch up with us on a fairly cold morning in the middle of January and hopefully in today's episode we're going to be showing you a few carp on the pole. Now this is for me is my favourite time of year to fish and that's just because it's a little bit harder, you have to work that little bit better to get the best out of your swim. It's not just a case of sometimes in the summer months where you can chuck a load of bait in and the fish will come to you. So the more you work at it, the more you get out of your fishing and that's just really satisfying for me personally. So that brings us on to where we are. Now, the lake we've chosen to fish today is a nice little lake. Unfortunately, it is a private lake, so we can't disclose where it is. But with this time of year, it's all about trying to find your fish. Now, sometimes in match situations, you haven't got a choice and you've got to get out what's in front of you in the peg you draw, which I'll try and explain a little bit more in a minute. But if you do get the luxury of drawing a little, little peg where you want, basically try and find some areas where fish are going to likely to be. Now, I've got some lilies over there to my right. I've got a nice far margin with some overhanging trees straight in front of me, some open water, and to my left, another patch of lilies. So there's loads of features for fish, and hopefully we'll find little pockets of fish all over this peg. Now, if you haven't got the choice in your match situation, it's all about your plummet. You've got to get your plummet on, find what's in front of you, some hills, gullies, anywhere that's going to hold that extra fish or two. So this is what I said, you've got to work that little bit harder when it's this time of year. Now, this time of year is what I like to call fishing for a bite. And what I mean from that is you're fishing for one fish at a time. You're feeding enough for one bite, one fish, and then you move on. Now, you're probably going to have two, three, four swims going at the same time. If you want to get the best out of your swim, you need to get fish. And now it's probably, you catch one fish from there, you'll move, catch another fish from there, and you'll move and catch another fish from there, and then you can go from the start. And you keep going fish all day. You find the water's clear, every time you hook when they spook, trying to catch one back on that spot can be a real mission sometimes. You're just best to go on to another swim you've started. So with that in mind, let's talk to you a bit about the bait. Now, as I said, I'm really not going to be feeding a lot today. I've prepared a little bit, but I'll be really surprised if bait combined, I use more than a quarter of a pint of everything together. So we really are going to be on the cautious side. Now there is just some micro pellets soaked in F1. And if you follow our channel, you'd see many times we've prepared these. If you don't, just look at our old videos and you'll see how to prepare them properly. We've got a few maggots. That's probably going to be my choice of hook bait. That little bit of movement can really create extra bites for you this time of year. And then we've also got a little bit of corn. That's purely for a visual side. The water's a little bit clearer. Little bits of colour in there can be attracting and get you that extra bite. Last of all, before we start fishing, we'll have a little look at the rig. Now, this is a little bit more sophisticated than sometimes in the summer. I'm all for simple rigs, more about how you're presenting your bait and how you're feeding is how you catch fish, but it is a little bit trickier this time of year. So we'll start with the elastic. Now this is double five. Unfortunately, sometimes you can never 100% tell what size fish you're gonna catch. So you've gotta create elastic that's gonna do from smaller fish all the way up to the bigger fish. And this is what this is for. With a puller bung on the end, I'm happy that that can land anything that we're hooking today. Now, as I said, it's cold. They're not going to be fighting as hard, so that's definitely elastic of choice. Now, the biggest change to the rig from what I normally would fish just throughout most of the season is actually above the float. Now, that might sound a little bit weird, but if I just explain to you, above the float, we've actually got a, a longer length of the line between the float and elastic than what we normally would have. And in between there is two shots. Basically all that's doing or allowing you to do, with the water being so clear, fish are really shy of things over the head, poles over the head. So that's going to allow you to fish the actual pole tip higher from the water from your floats. You've got the bigger drop, less cast the shadow on the water, and it's just stopping from getting spooked. Now them shot, all they do is let you keep in contact with that float. As they hang down, if I just take this from here, as them shot hang down, as you can see, that will stay much, much tighter. If that's just in the wind with them shot on there, it will just blow around all over the place. So that's just so you can keep a long line, but tight to your float. You need to be quick on the bites. Now the float is just a normal Preston PB3.4 gram. Nice sturdy float with a, uh, a wire stem, nice and stable. Line choice is 012 with an 010 hook link. Again, that is relatively light, but they're not gonna be pulling too hard and we've got a set fairly soft elastic, so that should be okay. Shot and pan is just a bulk with two droppers, and we're fishing at dead depth. Now what I mean by dead depth is when you plumb up, you literally want your float, just your bristle showing once that plummet has hit the bottom. 
that is perfect. Now, we've got three swims or two swims, possibly three, that we're going to be fishing today. And I'll show you just how to start a swim off this time of year. Now, this is what I said, fishing for a bite. I'm literally going to put, I don't know, maybe 20 micro pellets in there and two maggots. That is it. That is what I'm starting my swim off with. There's no cup today. There's no putting bait in. So there's going to be one of these go on the swim to my right where I've chosen, which is next to some lee pads. And luckily, we've got the same depth straight in front of me in some open water. So there's going to be another one of these go out on a separate swim. So we've got two swims to start with. And what you do is you'll feed one, fish the other. If you have a fish on that, you'll then feed the next one and fish it in reverse. So it's all about changing from swim to swim and keeping those fish guessing where your hook bait is. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these out now and then we'll get fishing. Right, that's the second one done. So we've now we've got two spots with probably 20 to 30 pellets in each with a few maggots. That's gonna, all we're going to be kicking off with. Now it's time to get out and start fishing. As I said, we're going to be starting on reds. I'll probably start on double red, just so there's a little bit of movement there. And just to see what's out there, it'll catch anything. It'll catch smaller fish, it'll catch bigger fish. Now I'm not going to feed anything else on this cast. We've just put them two out. Now I'll start on the first one I potted, which was in open water, because that's been in there a few seconds longer. So we'll just keep it. Now we've got a marker on the far side, so you know exactly where that bait is. And it's just a case of lowering the rig slowly to eliminate any issues of tangles, and that settles nicely. Now as I said, them shot are hanging there nicely, so it keeps in contact with that float, but the pole is a lot higher off the water. So now I don't think it's going to start instantly, but we'll see what happens in the next few minutes. If not, we'll move to the next swim and we'll see what happens on that one. Well, there we are. That was actually a little bit quicker than expected. We'd probably been fishing for a minute or two and the float is just buried nicely. And we're into the first fish of the session. Now just taking it a little bit easy, letting that light elastic do the work. It's really trying to go for them lilies over the far side. But as I said, they've not got full strength this time of year. You can normally control them. I'm just gonna turn around this way and try and get them back around that corner. It's really trying to go around. Try and keep steady pressure. I may have to get the pole back out. Just decided to go around the corner. So we'll take a couple of sections off. Oh no, he's coming back around. That's what I was saying, just hold them steady. Normally you'll find they'll... not full of energy. This is where that puller bun comes in nice and handy. So now that's what I was saying, I've only fed 20 or 30 pellets and instantly there's fish on it. Now, I don't think that would happen if you just fed it anyway. You've got to find little areas. Now as I said, that was straight out in front of us, so it looks like why would there be a fish there? But that's all about using the plummet. I've plumbed up and there's a little hole there. It's probably six to eight inches deep and three or four foot round. So it's a great little spot for fish to hold into. And if you're putting bait where fish are, you don't need to feed loads and loads of bait. You just put a tiny little bait, so it's just one mouthful for one fish. If there is a fish there, you're going to catch it straight away. Now, we've also got another swim already priming. As I said, we've plumbed it up. So once we've got this in, we'll try the next swim and we'll see if we can have one in such quick concession. Well, there we are. What about that for a cracking start? Been fishing no longer than a couple of minutes. And we've already got the first fish in the net. A nice common, freezing cold, probably not moving anywhere. But when you put in baits right in front of them, 
I think they struggle to resist it. Lovely little start. Sun is coming in and out of the clouds today. It's a bit of a weird conditions, but it hasn't put him off by the looks of it. We'll slip him back and see if we can get a few more in that other swim. Let's get him back. Well, that was a cracking start. Well chuffed with that to get a fish that early on. Just gives me that little bit of confidence that where I've picked, it's a spot on place to fish. Now this bit is just as important as the cupping in at the start as what you do next. Now, as I said, the water's really, really clear. There was obviously fish there, but I've just hooked a fish and it's torn through the swim. It's been left and right. To be honest with you, when it's this clear and they're that spooky, if I was to go back on that spot, I reckon I'd be waiting a good 10 or 15 minutes before even having a chance of a fish being back there. I mean, I think they will settle back there. They're obviously there for a reason, but it just does really spook this time of year. So what I'm gonna do, it's the same again, tiny, tiny amounts of bait. My own little design toss pots these are. We've actually made these out of little tops of fruit shoot. Now you can buy them, but these are just so small, it just stops you feeding too much bait. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna cut that bait on the peg that I just had that fish from, but I'm then gonna move and fish the other peg that I baited up earlier. And that's how you do it throughout the day. Catch your fish, feed it, fish the next one. Catch your fish from there, feed that one, fish the next one. So you're never fishing on top of your feed. I don't in particularly think fish this time of year like feed falling over top of the head. So while they're not there, get some bait in, get them ready for when they come back. Anyway, let's do that now and get fishing the next spot. Well, there we are, that is two absolute prime examples of feeding somewhere else and fishing the next swim. Both swims there have had a little bit of time to rest. There's actually a tench here, quite a nice tench. But there's, I've just put bait in two swims where I expected fish to be, and both times it's worked out to be true. Like I said, I don't think I would have had this fish by now if I would have fished exactly where I hooked that first fish. So they always give me a bit of grief. But nice tench. Thought it was a carp originally, but nice little surprise. Love catching tench, so he's very welcome. Let's put him back. And it's now time to repeat that process. So we're now gonna feed that swim and then fish the one where we originally had the first fish because that's now had two or three minutes resting while we were playing that fish and getting that bite. Staying with Maggot, it seems to be working so far. Now, I mean, I'm doing it with two swims at the minute, but if it does get harder and you feel the need to change and do three swims, or even in a match, if you're really trying to win the match, do four. And it just, it's brilliant because you're not creating any swim as such, you're fishing such little amounts of bait, you're not really committing yourself to anywhere. So if you have four or five fish off that spot and then you find 10, 20 minutes you don't get a bite, just create another one. Just move five or six foot to the right and start again. You really aren't sticking yourself in a situation where you don't really want to move. I mean, it's so easy just to put a pile of bait in and think they'll eventually come to it, but they won't always come to it. So. It's just been very much nice. So that one's now going to settle. Bait's in there. That's going to have three or four minutes while we fish this one that's already been settling. So let's see if it's just as quick this time. Just found another fish. We've just slowly flicked between both swims. I haven't fed any more on each swim. I mean, I really don't think there's a need to feed much bait this time of year at all. So all I've just kept doing, I'm, I'm lucky today because 
both pegs are on the same depth. So I can literally pick my pole up, put it on there, try fishing for a minute, no joy, back over there. And eventually one of them will, fish will come back into the peg. So it's just a case of finding which one they come back into first. And then you can concentrate on the next one. After that, when they've spooked off this one, you get a bit more idea of what swim's gonna produce the next fish. Just try and take the time, it's where this puller bung comes into brilliant effect. Without this, you'd be playing fish for so long. You'd be spending so much time out of the water. It just wouldn't make sense to fish this light without a puller bung. It's a nice looking carp. This water is so clear. I don't know if you can pick it up on camera quite how clear it is, but that fish is three or four foot down and I can see it really well. Just emphasises exactly what I'm saying about having them shots so you can have your pole higher. It really does make all these little different changes make them all worthwhile when you start catching fish. There he is. Another lovely fish. Not the biggest in the lake. I'm hoping we might be able to show you one slightly bigger. There's some nice fish in here, but having said that, probably not going to be as nice looking as that. That's got some sort of koi cross in it, gold and orange on the head, but mostly a common. That sun's shining through, glistening on the scales nicely. Really, really nice fish. Let's see if we can pop him back. Well, time to get another bait out there. Stay with Maggot, working really well. Just quickly, nick a couple of those on. That fish come on the right hand swim. So in this cast, it's gonna be putting bait on the right and fish in the left. And hopefully, while we've been playing that fish and hooking the last fish, Let's give it time to rest, and there should be one waiting for us as soon as we we get back down there. So the rig's not going this swim. I'm literally just going to tap some bait out straight over to the next one and lower that rig in very, very slowly. I know I do keep going on about it, but it's so important just to lower that rig to make sure it don't tangle. And as you can see, them shot working really well. I can keep my tip a lot lot higher off the water is so clear i don't know if i can actually show you quite how clear it is if i just drop a couple of bits of corn down the edge now that's about three or four foot deep down there and i can pretty much well i can see them on the bottom i don't know if you can pick it up on the camera but there's definitely clear water and there is a fish there it's only a little one but it does show just resting it that tiny little bit is very very important it's a little tension on that another thing you may notice is also how well dotted down my pole float is I've only got a couple of inches of bristle showing and then you can see bites from these little fellas as well this time they're not really hammering it and, and really pulling the float under they're just tiny little dinks and if that pole tip dinks the surface any sort of movement I'm hitting it and I expect there to be a fish on the end it really is negative and finesse fishing I'm not gonna put him in a net he's a little bit small he can be off happy for another day but we'll get another bait out we'll now feed that peg fish the next and hopefully we'll catch a few more fish throughout in the session and preferably we'll see if we can catch that bigger fish we're on a boat Another nice fish. I'm just going to put another bait on. I'm not. We haven't got too much longer. We're going 
go home. It's a big game for Norwich today. It's always supporting your local team. So we're going to fish until just after lunchtime. We've got probably another half an hour or so, and then we're going to go and watch the football. But even if we don't have any more fish, it's been a cracking day. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I'm pretty sure we'll we'll have another fish or two. But let's get this bait back out there. Just exactly the same as before, that fish come on the left hand side. So that's where this bait's going to go. And then the rig's going to fish the other swims. Clap that bait out. And then we're fishing the other side. Well, we have managed to hook another carp. He's really going for that far side at the moment. We've had a few more tench, a couple more golden tench, but we're trying to hang out for one more cup before we decide to call it a day. Hopefully, this is what we're after. Feels like another cup. Yeah, here's a cup. I've just seen him. See these fish really far out in this water. You, sort of, you know what you've got a minute or two before you land it. Plodding along. There we are. Lovely fish to end on. Another common. He's also got some of that orangey sort of tinge to him. Let's try and get his fin out. There we are. Probably got a little bit of koi crossing him. That wind's sort of picking up a bit. And that's a cracking way to end on. Well, there we are. Let's slip him in the net. And then we'll have a look at what we've had throughout the day. Just pop him back. There we are. He's away safely. Just going to clip this rig on the top kit and we'll have a little look at what we've had. Well, moment of truth. It's always nice for me personally, just to see what you've had. I think if you take a session, half the time you forget what you've caught and just to see at the end, it's just nice, quite rewarding. Yeah, and there's actually a few more in there than I expected. Like I said, it's a real surprise sometimes, you just forget what you've done, but I think we'll actually take these up the bank and have a little pitch with those. That'll be a nice one for the album. Well, this looks like a nice place to release them. I'm quite low to the water. It's been a great day's fishing and a lovely net of fish to go back as well. Come on. Well, what a lovely sight, seeing them all swim back happy and living for another day. It's been a great day's fishing and it's exactly what I said, was fishing for a bite. We've fed probably under quarter of a pint of bait and you've seen what a cracking net of fish. All we need now is a good three points for Norwich and it'll be the perfect day. We'll see you again on the next one and thanks for watching.